Welcome to Introduction to Geographic Information Systems. This, and the other learning resources in this course have been made possible by funding from the European Commission's Erasmus Plus program. Historians of GIS have divided up the decades of its history into themes of development. 1. A pre-GIS period of development, where key basic concepts were established. 2. A pioneer period from the late 1950s to the 1970s which emphasized conceptual and software development. 3. A government-funded experimental research period from the 1970s to the early 1980s, with the software continuing to be provided on mainframe computers. 4. A commercial period with increased involvement of both industry and government from the early 1980s to the late 1980s, dominated by companies such as ESRI. 5. The end of the 1980s to the early 1990s saw the software move to user-friendly interfaces on desktop computers. 6. The 1990s saw the creations of geographic information science. 7. Finally, from the 1990s onwards has been an explosion in the open movement in GIS, both in open data and open source. Additionally, there has been diversification into other methods of delivery such as web-based GIS. Most accounts of the history of GIS cite the work of Dr. John Snow, the British physician who, in 1854, mapped a cholera outbreak in London, as the start of GIS or GIS-like work. Though this is not the first documented instance of this, that occurred in France in 1832. That is when French geographer, Charles Piquet created a map-based representation of cholera epidemiology for Paris. He did this by representing the 48 districts of Paris with different halftone color gradients, like an early version of a heat map. The map, published in the report, Rapport sur la marche et les effets de cholera morbu dans Paris, is likely the first use of spatial analysis in epidemiology. There are also other contenders for this idea of mapping non-landscape features to draw conclusions. The French cartographer, Berthier, during the Battle of Yorktown in the American War of Independence, frequently created map overlays of troop movements. Or the atlas that accompanied the second report of the Irish Railway Commissioners, in 1837, that displayed population, traffic flows, topography and geology all overlain on a base map. However, as the brilliant timeline of, milestones in the history of thematic cartography, Statistical graphics, and data visualization, shows there has been many, many, small steps that contributed to the development of modern GIS. There is no one moment in which GIS came fully formed into existence, it was a process. It would also be a while before utilized mapping for data analysis took off. Research shows that in the United States the method of overlay analysis and mapping only became popular and more widespread at the turn of the 20th century. The next significant step in the development of GIS was in the mid-20th century when people began to print map aspects on transparent plastic. Vegetation, water and developed land could all be printed as separate themes and then overlaid on one another. This is sometimes called sieve mapping. Whilst giving the appearance of being a GIS this does not represent a full one as there is no opportunity to provide an analysis of the map data. By the 1960s computers were starting to become more mainstream and get wider use and it was almost inevitable they would be applied to maps. The first fully functional vector-based GIS, the Canada Geographic Information System, or CGIS, was developed. The CGIS, initially a collaboration between Roger Tomlinson's company, Spartan Air Services of Ottawa, and the Canadian government's Canada Land Inventory, produced a series of innovations including hardware for laser scanning of maps and software for vectorizing the resulting images. This early work with the Canada Land Inventory, that started in 1962, is widely recognized as the beginnings of GIS. Though it was not until 1965 that the term was first used in a publication by Michael Dacey and Dwayne Marble from the Department of Geography at the University of Illinois, in their paper titled, Some Comments on Certain Technical Aspects on Geographic Information Systems. Because of Roger Tomlinson's seminal contribution to the origins and development of GIS he has often been credited with being the father of GIS. During that time others were working on programs that contributed greatly to the development of GIS. While at Northwestern University in 1964, Howard Fisher created one of the first computer mapping software programs known as CIMAP. In 1965, he established the Harvard Laboratory for Computer Graphics. Some of the first computer map making software was created and refined at the lab, it also became a research center for spatial analysis and visualization. The Harvard Laboratory made major algorithmic contributions and produced widely adopted computer mapping packages, such as Simap, Caform, Simbu, Grid, Polyvert, and Odyssey. The first three packages for producing line printer maps in 2D and 3D plots, respectively, 
were adopted throughout North American universities. William Warrens became the director of the Harvard Laboratory in 1969 and made further conceptual contributions, including a recognition that the critical features of surfaces such as the peaks, pits, passes and pales, could be used to produce triangulated irregular network models to provide more compact storage of surface features. In the United Kingdom, the Experimental Cartography Unit was founded in 1967 by David Bickmore, head of the Cartography Unit at the Clarendon Press. Like the Harvard Laboratory, the ECU stimulated and championed the possibilities of computer-based mapping, providing the incentive for the British Ordnance Survey to move into automated, computer-based mapping. The U.S. Census Bureau were early adopters of some of the core principles of GIS. It was the pioneering work by the U.S. Census Bureau that led to the digital input of the 1970 census using the data format GBF-DIME or Geographic Base File, dual independent map encoding. GBF-DIME became a file format that supported digital data input, error fixing and even choropleth mapping. Using this format, the U.S. Census Bureau began to digitize census boundaries, roads and urban areas. This was a huge step forward in the history of GIS. The theoretical and software developments during this period were taking place within academia, government agencies, and industry. Algorithms to solve location allocation problems that had been developed in the mid-1960s were now available in standalone programs and were also being integrated into software. In Europe, government-sponsored research led to the development of the Swedish Road Data Bank and other computerized spatial databases. Developments in GIS reflected advances in the field of computer science. During this period, mainframe systems had given way to mini computers based on time sharing and, eventually, to desktop microcomputers, enabling the gradual movement of GIS software to these new computing platforms. One of the most prominent and earliest of the government-supported, mainframe GIS of this period was the Minnesota Land Management Information System. By the 1980s, such mainframe systems were gradually becoming obsolete, due to high maintenance costs, the problem of data currency, access issues, and non-user-friendly command line interfaces. The introduction of powerful workstations in the early 1980s led to the gradual demise of large mainframe systems. After starting development in 1977, the Map Overlay and Statistical System MOSS, was deployed in 1979. MOSS represented one of the earliest, if not the first, public domain, open-source GIS. In the late 1970s, memory size and graphics capabilities were improving. Desktop GIS programs for personal computers started appearing in the 1980s. Users started to adopt GIS technology in different ways. Even archaeologists started to use GIS. Classrooms, businesses, governments around the world started to harness digital mapping and analysis. In 1982, ESRI had released ARC Info, the first commercial GIS. ARC Info adapted the CGIS model of handling the spatial and attribute data separately. In 1986, ESRI released PC ARC Info due to the popularity of the IBM PC desktop computer. At the same time access to data became easier. The Spot Image is a company created by the French space agency, Centre National d'Etudes Spatiales, the IGN, and space manufacturers in 1982 as the commercial operator for the Spot Earth observation satellites. It was the first company created that distributed global commercial satellite imagery, which became a significant source of data used in GIS. In 1986, the Tiger data was first released by the U.S. Census Bureau. An acronym for Topologically Integrated Geographic Encoding and Referencing, Tiger data created by the U.S. Census Bureau is a collection of geographic datasets such as roads, buildings, rivers, and lakes, as well as census tracts areas. Since it is public data, Tiger information is freely available. Other countries including Canada and the United Kingdom, made census data only available on a so-called cost recovery basis, arguably imposing a continuing chill on what might have been a more robust market for GIS data. In recent years many countries have permitted more open access to geospatial data under the Aarhus Convention, which became law in October 2001. E-government now incorporates an open access philosophy and uses GIS to enable the delivery of spatially referenced data between government and citizens. During this period, vendors moved away from the complexity of command line interfaces to graphical user interfaces, once again tracking ongoing developments in computer hardware and commercial operating systems and interfaces, including the so-called WIMP interface of windows, icons, menus, and pointers. During this period, a number of companies supplied GIS software that specialized in niche markets. For example, Caliber Corporation produced TransCAD, a software package focused on transportation planning and transportation GIS. Others, such as Idrisi, 
developed by Clark University, successfully catered to the academic market, providing detailed tutorials and accompanying datasets. In June 1993, the first web-based interactive map was published. Steve Putz developed the Xerox Park Map Viewer, the web's first interactive map viewer. The mid-1990s saw a major change in the development of the academic discipline of GIS. In 1992, Goodchild published a major paper where he argued that the discipline should move from a concern with the technology of geographic information systems to developing answers to questions that might more properly be considered part of a geographic information science. In the arguments of his paper, Goodchild stated that much of the early history of GIS was technology-driven. It was concerned with how to get geographical data into an information system. He argued, now was the time to concentrate on the task of how to handle and exploit the data held in these GIS databases. Within a few years a number of journals had changed their names to reflect this new emphasis on science as opposed to systems. For example, in 1997 the International Journal of Geographic Information Systems had replaced the word systems in its name with science. The American Cartographer, which had been launched in 1974, had changed its name in 1990 to Cartography and Geographic Information Systems. This lasted until 1999, when it also changed the systems in its title to science. A huge breakthrough came on May 1, 2000, when the USA announced the discontinuation of selective availability of the Global Positioning System signals available to the public. Prior to the ending of selective availability, GPS data had purposefully introduced errors to make it harder to get accurate locations. After this change, GPS collected data by the public could be used with GIS as it was now significantly more accurate. Since then the trend has been for more and more openness in GIS. This includes open data. In August 2004, OpenStreetMap was founded. OpenStreetMap provides crowdsourced geographic data worldwide. Amazing projects like QGIS are providing any user with a computer the opportunity to use GIS software. Computers have improved by leaps and bounds and we now think of GIS data storage in terabytes. It's no longer gigabytes or megabytes. Tiger data, Landsat satellite imagery and even LiDAR data is accessible to download for free. Other software developments, like Google Earth, have led to the almost universal use of geographic information and related technologies. The familiarity of large sections of populations with this type of software has led to the rise of location-based services and to new developments such as web mapping services. Advances in computer technology, cloud computing, and the rise in importance of big data are almost immediately integrated into GIS software. Today it is now easier to get higher quality data and use GIS from the comfort of your own home on your personal computer or even mobile phone.